Aye. Five oh one. Recording in progress. I'm not taking any communion, but I think that's just a way to have a lot of the sure. Yeah. So there's no component of the book. Right. So this is really the, um, more of the transition discussions. Um, so, so Paul, you Actually, so let's pick, kind of pick up on, so the Zoom, Chuck said he um, was going to handle, um, the assessing maps, um, I guess since um, Andrea said, I just need to get an understanding of what the process, well, what the process is, who was owning it before, and um, what you were proposing. So, so, so all I'm proposing here is, you know, until there's a new town administrator, you know, there's nothing to do with tax maps until the spring. Everything's done for now, except that we need to make sure we get our new copies of maps. Okay. So that's all I'm proposing. As for long term, I'm not making any any proposals for how things are managed. Okay. So maps happen, we hope, annually, but it depends on... Um, we went for a year without a contract, so when we get new maps today, th this year, it'll be the first time in two years that we will have new maps. Um, th that creates some challenges um, to not have updated maps on the website or in-house when people come in and have questions and you want to be looking at a current situation and you assume you are, but maybe you're not, if they're not done regularly because if somebody comes in and has a question about their new property like in Scarlet Lane and you need to know what the setbacks are then you have to find the original plan that was approved maybe nine months ago. Mm -hmm. so, so it's kind of a problem not to have updated maps annually so I would always suggest that the board do that. As far as process, um, the planning board approves think everything that affects the assessing maps. And th there are two components um, to the implications there. One is the maps, the visual representation of how big lots are, where the lot lines are. Those are in the maps. But then also the assessing database um, from which tax bills are generated needs to also reflect that now it's a smaller size lot or a bigger size lot or, or whatever the change is when the planning board makes such a decision. So, so what was your role in managing the maps? So, the, well, basically I, I oversee all of the land use functions and the implications of whatever the planning board and the zoning board do. Okay. Um, it, you know, so, so Tom is the land use administrator, has a role in that, and he reports to me. Sarah as the um, minute taker and, select, and, and secretary of the zoning board and planning board, she does a lot more than just print agendas and notices, but she makes sure that applicants have the right application, and when applications are received, she makes sure that it has all of the labels and the fees and the, and the abutters are correct. So she does a lot of that kind of work, so I oversee that, and then when the planning board makes the decision, Ultimately, the chair of the planning board needs to sign off on the plans that, depending on what it is, but if it's a subdivision or a lot line adjustment, it has to go to the registry. Are those being digitized? No. No. Okay. So, so the. So your your current your task here that you mentioned, um, find approved plans of any subdivisions and. Lot That's line all done. Okay. That's all done. So, so that has to happen every year, but for this, that doesn't have to happen again until the spring. Okay. Except to say it should be an ongoing process that whenever the planning board has um, a, you know, something new has been approved through that process, mm -hmm. it should get through assessing. Okay. And that part has not always happened well, and it's a work in progress, okay. and, you know, that is up for discussion for another time. Yeah, how well, that can be managed better. What we don't want is a repeat of when Mark Douglas and having something like that happen where it fell through the cracks. Okay. I can. So, I'd like to interject when you when I you're ready for that. An address, please. 
Pardon? Can you state your name and address? Well, I'm here as the tax collector. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so Andrea Cass, 15 Elbin Lane, but I'm speaking as the tax collector. Um, so Caroline has misrepresented a bit about the tax map updates. Um, the process was I always did it. So when Beverly Dion was here, she did it. When she left, there was no one that took over. So I stepped in doing the tax map updates um, and assessing updates because of my real estate background. Um, when Caroline transitioned um, to the bookkeeper, I was still doing that. Um, and I've always managed it because when it comes to tax time, spring pickup, which is not part of the tax map updates, but it's part of the whole assessing process, which correlates to the property tax bills being generated. Um, Avatar needs to be managed. Avatar doesn't always capture everything. And I think that that was just a transition from Ed being the select board member who did everything and has its transitioned to a different board situation currently. Um, as the tax collector, um, I need to be involved. So with tax map updates, tax maps, uh, um, planning uh, plans weren't being recorded. Planning board approved plans were not being recorded when I started here in 2011. I don't know why, if it was just the planning board didn't have that knowledge of, of that's what needed to happen. So um, lot line adjustment plans, if they were approved, they were leaving it up to the property owner to, to get recorded. Well, in addition to a, a lot line adjustment plan, you have to have deeds recorded at the same time. So there were a lot of things that were being done halfway. Um, so again, I stepped in and I was actually working with the planning board for a, a, a bit that they were paying me to go to the registry to, to make sure that everything was done properly. Um, I had some things going on in my per personal life that I had to step away. I didn't have that additional time. So my understanding is Sarah doing that now? And it has been since you haven't been. Since I stepped but away. But I'm not disagreeing with anything you've said. Okay, and so she's getting that additional $50, that, that payment. Whatever it was, to do that. there's a stipend for each time. Okay, so she's getting that now. So um, the reality is, is when I was doing that, I was maintaining that information because that information is required to get the tax maps updated. In addition to, there are lot mergers. Um, lot unmerges that have nothing to do with the planning board. It's just you have to be aware of it and make sure it gets captured on the tax maps. Um, when you sent the information this year, did you send last year's information as well? So yes. everything is captured and I for the I, last two years. And I believe I copied you on that. Because there were only three things. Yes. And, and I think they were all this year. There was nothing. Scarlet Lane, I think, was approved last year. But, okay. but whatever it was, it was within that two year period. So we're and covered. I think we've for got that. it all under control. Well, well you see, it when it's under control, it still needs to be managed. Because, ongoing, absolutely. Yeah, just, it takes I, months this is just a for Avatar time. to get it. And Basically, it's an ongoing you all You give the time. them the information, and I'll have to follow up, and then I'll have to double check. Because sometimes they miss things, too. Ashton it does the best that she can at Avatar. Um, so I want to be involved um, because, again, there's a direct correlation to assessing and tax bills. Um, that if, if I'm involved in the process, I, I'm aware of things. So when bills are generated, if something doesn't look right, I can catch it before it gets too far down the road. Okay. Um, thank you. You're welcome. So this comment that I wrote about um, federal <coughs> management tax pass for Chuck only, um, is that pretty much doing what you were doing, overseeing it on no. that level? No. Well, no. Is it what Sarah no. was doing? This, this is a very small matter, small task, individual item. Okay. You know, maybe give it three or four more weeks, and if you don't have maps, call and say, where are maps? There, there's okay. no oversight and management or supervision of Avatar or any of what Andrea alluded to. It's just make sure that if in a certain amount of time we don't have maps that somebody's calling Avatar or at least not paying the bill for the map contract, that too. Okay. So, so he'll, he can manage that, but I'm not, I, I wouldn't want to propose that Chuck, and nor would Chuck want to be in charge of okay. any of those things. Okay. I would not suggest that. Okay. But I would suggest that, you know, with anything that, you know, when you have a new town administrator in place, if that's what you're going to choose to do, the avatar contract is in that job description, and that the new 
the, the new board with your new member and the new town administrator and the tax collector all sit down together and, and make sure that everybody's on the same page with how all kinds of things should happen, including that. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, thank you, Andrea. So I'm asking you good for this part. I am. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Do it some more. Thank you. All right. Um, so let's see. So, um, so it looks like we got through um, most of these. Um, and I, um, and I did make notes. Um, Ch I saw Chuck is kind of hand on welfare. Sound A is the point of contact for the fall newsletter, except for content. Yes. Yeah, we'll um, look at it separately. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, and then agenda creation. So I took I took that for now. Um, and then, so, oh. Um, so so one note about agenda creation. Um, I I would suggest that once you have a new. Um, once you have a new board member on board, there needs to be clarity amongst the board around what does that mean? Are you just creating an agenda and everything carries forward? Or um, are they really delegating to you the authority to decide that tonight's not the night to talk about something? Because that has much, you know, you, you always, you have always had at the end of the agenda any other business that comes before the board so a board member can say, I don't see it on the agenda, but I'd really like to talk about this item. Um, so on the one hand, you're kind of covered under that, but agenda control is a lot of controlling of the conversation, yeah. which is in a way kind of speaking for other board members about you know, what we're going to address tonight or not address tonight. So just to make sure that the whole board is aligned with sure. what that means, because you don't have a board policy that would otherwise tell you, which mm -hmm. would really be helpful. Yeah, and so <clears throat> when we met yesterday, um, the agenda that I used was only what we agreed on, so we had agreed by vote to move um, the, the policy and all that. that. Yep. So that was excluded, but only in the case where we agree by vote to take it off the agenda um, is what the approach would be for me. Um, but otherwise, it'll move through the end. But if it gets completed, like if a task gets completed, then I think. Then I think, you know, if, yes, there's a vote, we're done with it. I think it's, you know, some of it is kind of obvious, but. Um, and, and also, if you decide to put something on the agenda, the people can certainly vote to table it. Um, I, I just wanted to call attention to the fact that there is some power in that and to make sure that all the board members are on board with understanding, you know, what that power really is, sure. what it means. Yep. Yep. Okay, great. Um, Paul, is there anything else on the spreadsheet? No. Okay. I think we covered most of the other night. Yeah. There was, um, oh, so um, tracking key time off, Chuck. Um, Google admin, Tia, Chuck, um, meeting notices, Chuck. I included both of them. I don't know. Um, so um, Tia operates best from a Word document. So um, Chuck would typically, typically I would put something on the public calendar, mm -hmm. although he's certainly capable of doing that. And I would send Chuck an email to say, please notice the whatever meeting next Tuesday. And he would create the Word document and print it and post it and send it to the group email address, because it's not just Tia, mm -hmm. but there's a group email address that goes to me and Chuck, the library, and Tia, so that it's also posted at the library. Okay. Um, so, so he'll send a Word document to that whole group email address so everybody knows the library posts it and then Tia is informed. Um, so who's responsible for posting it from the buildings, the post office? Yeah. Chuck. Okay. Like when he prints that Word document, he posts it at the buildings okay. and he sends that email to the group email address. Okay. Or if somebody else is creating a posting, for example, when Sarah creates a notice that there's a ZBA meeting, she will email that to the posting group email. Chuck will notice that that is not one that he created, so he will do the paper posting and then T is in that group and she will send it out via email. Okay. So that pretty much already runs itself. The trick is to make sure that um, <coughs> boards and committees know to communicate with Chuck about meetings because if Chuck doesn't know it's happening, 
Right. That's the thing to look out for. Um, so as ex officios, you could be helpful in making sure that Chuck knows that you have a meeting on whatever your respective other committee or board is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Um, let's see. So there were, um, things. oh, um, so um, just some security things. Uh, thank you for sending the contacts. Um, password changes um, and keys. So we probably so, should plan to meet with you on Friday. Well, you're you're welcome to, but I've already printed out a receipt. Um, for me to chuck and chuck to sign, um, okay. I, I, you can somebody else can sign it if you want. But um, I, I did the same thing for Miles. Typically, I do that for anybody who's turning in um, keys and equipment. I write up a receipt and I sign it, and the other person signs it, and we both keep a copy. Okay. So I have that with Miles. I accepted his keys. I have his laptop. Okay. Um, I've written up the receipt for all of the stuff that. I know I need to re return, which is a printer and a, and a Bluetooth mouse and the laptop and power cord and, and my keys. Okay. So I will turn those, and he already has my credit card, and you saw that I already canceled my credit card at the bank. Mm -hmm. So um, you, you're welcome to be here for that or do it instead of Chuck. Yep. It's up to you, but um, the receipt's all written out. So, um, so you have the password access to everybody, like everything. So who's Tom going to do LaBelle that? has the password access okay. to everything. So, you know, here's the password to this device yeah. so for the next person to open it up and see. Right. Um, Chuck knows the password to my computer. Um, well, I would talk to Tom. Account. Um, he's a Google admin, okay. so so he can reset my password, and I've instructed him to do that on Friday afternoon before he leaves. I won't know the password anymore. Okay. okay. So, yeah, so I'll actually go delete it more like 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. Um, so Tom LaBelle was already instructed for that? Um, no, no. Um, so Tom LaBelle has all the passwords. Okay. So if you want passwords for anything, yeah. he has all the passwords. Um, and he's the only one that has all of them. Some people might know some passwords, but Tom LaBelle knows all the passwords. Okay. Chuck is instructed to okay. change my Google password. That's the only one I, you know, that's really the they're hanging that he needs to do. Okay. okay. All right. Great. You're on the ball. Um, yeah, thanks. Good. Mm -hmm. um, oh, um, actually, a question for you. So you got my email about the, the revised re revenue estimate? Yes, I did. And I thank you for saying that. I haven't dealt with it yet because it's a busy day. But I, I will. Um, you have the ambulance contract there, so it just needs a signature. Got I can it. upload Thank that. Thank you for that. Um, I just need to press a button in the portal with yep. those numbers, and I will send you an email that it just needs your signature since you approved it at the meeting, and um, that's fine. Chuck, Chuck knows how to upload that, or I can upload that, and that'll be fine. So, um, and you have the MS-1. I think you're all set then for the tax rate, except the water sewer district has the same bunch of documents due, and they know it and they're working on it, mm -hmm. but they that may end up holding us up. So there's nothing left for you to do as far as the tax rate is concerned at this point. Um, now it's up to Chuck when the time comes and the state reaches out to say whatever they have to say about questions. We're at the mercy of the state right now. Yeah. Um, so, what about inputting their documents into the portal? They have to do it. Okay. Um, and they know to do it. Um, we know they don't have a lot of staff, so it's always, they're often the ones to delay this process some. We also need the school to do their part. They have plenty of staff. They don't typically hold us up. Um, actually, the county and the state often hold us up because, of course, we collect taxes on their behalf. So. They have to get their paperwork done, and that all influences our process. So that's probably where we're at right now, is that until the state and county um, get their stuff done, it doesn't matter that the district and school probably aren't ready. But that should all happen within the next two or three weeks. So the, the county portion? Who goes that? The county. 
So they input, they, they input all their information separately? In their own portal, yep. okay. but yet the, the state portal ties in all the things that affect us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all the people in Stratford County will be tied into the county portal kind of behind the scenes in, the, in a way that we can't see or manipulate. Okay. Just Chuck's office. Yeah. You have, there is a singular key that looks like all of these other big weird keys, um, and it's in the desk that's facing the window. Okay. It's in the top right hand drawer. It's not labeled. It actually has a, a gauze keychain on it, okay. um, and it goes to Chuck's office. Okay. Right. So feel free to use it, but put it back for the next person so you all know where it is. Yeah. Um, and the other thing we had trouble with was building access. Um, somebody said there's only one key. Did George say there was one key? Um, so, that's the back and, and so, so the door at the end of the hall, the interior door, is the same key as the front door. Okay. So that you can get into. It's just the outside door, which um, when I hand in my keys, you'll be fine. Until then. Um, the police chief has an elevator key now, so he can head up the elevator to, to get in, but he doesn't have a key either. Okay. So, um, so you have keys. the one key to this side. Um, no. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, I, and, and Chuck has one and Dan has one. Okay. And, I, and Andrea has one. So, oh. so people do have them, but they're not a lot of them. Yeah. Okay. Um, they have a set of keys. I guess presumably went to the front. Well, so, so the, the, the key to the back door looks like a, more like a house key. Okay. You ready to swim in? We are. You have just a minute. We'll yes, take less than uh, two minutes. Um, well, can we do or can we do it in here and bring the clerk in here? Yeah, we've got him right behind us. Sure. And then everybody can sure. benefit from this. He looks I mean, nice. I think I can see him coming with his cover. So tonight we have a special occasion. We are going to swear in William. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Hello. Dan, where would you like us? Can we, can we frame you up against the wall so we can... That's fine. That's fine with me. Oh, well, you can take a picture. I don't... Okay. I have my camera right here. So yeah. basically, uh, I'm just going to raise your right hand and... Uh, Write your name. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right in there. No pressure, Wayne. <laughs> Hopefully, your last name will be easier to pronounce than your. It, it's really not. It's not. <laughs> no. <laughs> it may be more well, I, don't, I, don't, I had never actually heard anyone say it before. <laughs> what is your last name? Bonenberger. Okay. I can, have, I can work with that. Let's spell it. B O H N E N B E R G E R. Yeah, that's a tough one. Yes, it is. So basically, I'm going to read That's this nice. in sections, and then you'll just repeat after me. Okay. Okay? So you just raise your right hand. I, William Bonenberger. I, will, go ahead. I, William Bonenberger. Do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially. Do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform all duties. Discharge and perform all duties. Incumbent upon me as a police officer. Incumbent upon me as a police officer. It will comply with the Constitution of the United States of America. It will comply with the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution and the laws of the state of New Hampshire. The Constitution and the laws of the state of New Hampshire. The laws and ordinances of any subdivision thereof. The laws and the ordinances of any subdivision thereof. The ju judicial interpretation of those laws. The judicial interpretation of those laws. The rules and regulations of the Rollinsford Police Department. The rules and regulations of the Rollinsford Police Department. And the Law Enforcement Code of Ethics. And the Law Enforcement Code of Ethics. And that I will discharge the duties of my office. And that I will discharge the duties of my office. As a Rollinsford Police Officer to the best of my ability. Of a Rollinsford Police Officer to the best of my ability. Okay. You're sworn in. Hey. Okay. I will try not to stab. <laughs> <laughs> 
the turn. 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 If they're all here, you know, and, and the one person always gets to answer first, then maybe the others are benefiting from that person's answer. Well, it's interesting you said that because I mentioned that last night that we should, we really kind of give the candidates an opportunity to not be in the room or to be in the room without the other candidates. But we also can't, since it's a public meeting, we can't force them out of the room. Um, I, I'm not, you know, that, that's an interesting, I'm not sure about that and would, you know, be good to check ahead of time on that because, you know, it, the point is that tr the process is transparent and so I wonder if you couldn't treat applicants different than residents even though, of course, your applicants are residents. Um, so, mm -hmm. I don't know, but. Um, so I thought we should put it out to the candidates to see how they feel about having everybody in the room or nobody in the room. Um, I personally but, but you can't get rid of the public. Like, so you can see about like the, the candidates and what they want, but either way the public gets to stay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's up to, it's, if, if the candidates want to stay, or we ask the questions, that's fine. If we feel more comfortable where one candidate stays and we ask the questions and the other candidate stays, it's entirely up to you. Talk. What if you did a round table, sort of like, so you ask a question and people take turns with different questions for them first. Um, so we're limiting this to like 15 minutes mm -hmm. per person. So um, I, I, think, I think we want to keep it very targeted. Just, you know, a quick meet and greet discussion with candidates. And do you have Jody online? Because I see Jody's not here. She's no. sick. Okay. But she was going to try to call in. Um, Jody, are you on the line? I think you have to press star six to unmute yourself if they um, if they're on the phone. I think I can ask them. Uh, yeah, I don't know if they know that yeah. out there. Jody, are you on the line? Um, we'll give her a few minutes. Um, so, um, let's ask the candidates. Um, 
if they have a preference about having the other candidates in the room. Um, so, um, so we only have two, right? Cause yeah. Yeah, okay. right. I, I don't care either way. Okay. I don't either. Okay. Whatever is easiest for you. Okay. All right, so we'll just fire away question one and then. Um, but I, I see your point. Like maybe if you're going to ask, you know, person A the first question, Look at, first, then maybe the second person gets okay. the second you question. Right. Thank you, Jeff. Sorry. Um, and Joey, well, I'm going to get on this. She might. How you doing? Yeah. Sweet. She's not feeling good. She said she was I look happy. Now <laughs> 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 I have quite a bit. I've had three bad things though, so. Well, they come done. in three, so you should be done. You're done. Um, yeah, yeah. Save for the last. Okay, so I'll start. Um, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, I'm going to try to talk. Can you come up? You can. Are we doing it separate or are we doing it together? No, nope, separate. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, well, I guess my question is a little bit off the first question, but um, if you weren't the chosen candidate tonight, would you still consider being run for the second vote when the election comes up? Yes. Well, I know, I know I'd asked Denise about her background, but I worked with her and I know her background from the select board, so right. it's kind of straightforward for me. Okay. Um, I really don't have any specific questions. Okay. I mean, I don't even budget in. And okay. So I guess you can fire away at your question. Now. Okay. Um, so, so my question is um, the same for everybody. Um, I didn't know what can you, what do you, what can you bring to the table that will um, help the town, the employees, and the select board? And if you've already served on the board, what would you do differently? Well, I would bring fairness and respect. And um, I try to work with everyone equally. Um, I believe what I did on my three years on the select board was to bring all of that, and I have a very good working relationship with the department heads and um, serving on the budget committee and um, all of that. So um, what I would do, are you asking me what I would do yeah. if I become a selectman in general? Yes. I think one of the biggest things that we need to work on is job descriptions, policies, we worked on policies, it just kind of dragged out a little bit. I'd like to see more action on updating our policies and definitely updating job descriptions. And um, still continuing to work with the department heads. Um, uh, I think when we had our, uh, our meeting with each department head at, 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 in an evening, we met at their, their location as a board. I thought that was very informative. and also helped us understand what they're working with, where they're working, you know, what they're doing and seeing their equipment at the location in which it was. And I think that that was really important. And I know I learned a lot. And I think the departments uh, appreciated us coming and doing that. And I'd like to continue to do that. Um, so I'm going to just kind of follow up with that. And um, what do you think you can do to employ, um, improve employee relations um, within the town? Employee relations within the town, and then with the employees versus the board. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, 
and wasn't aware that we had a problem with the employee relations within the town. I think that a lot of, I think our town respects our employees. I'm not sure that there's any that they don't. I think that, you know, we just have to, if we just have to encourage our residents to come to the board and discuss instead of doing it on Facebook, that would be my, you know, my request is if there's a problem, you can't solve it on Facebook, you need to come see us. And then we'll talk about it and we'll work with the department heads and, you know, and whatever employee it pertains to. But we have to stop trying to run a business on Facebook. That's my, agree, my uh, opinion. <laughs> Um, okay. I just want to pause to point out that you've got Jody right. online, so right. I don't know no. if that's no. changing anything. No. But well, I'd have to read the conversation entirely. I couldn't see which, it. Yeah, which you can't really do. Right. But you, you might take a moment to ask Jody if she wanted to follow the same process the other two have agreed sure. to. Jody, um, so we agreed um, that the candidates would be outside the room, um, so you wouldn't necessarily hear each other's responses. So um, I, I guess I could have you turn your speaker off, but I'm not really or sure. Just, yeah, like go, you know, drop off and come back when yeah. um, she can provide her phone number and somebody can text her to join back or something. Okay. Um, I, but we can't require it. Yeah. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Um, so, Jody, can I just ask you? Oh, let me ask you. Um, okay. Can you unmute yourself? There you go. Um, okay. Would you mind just turning your speaker off? Um, so, you know, just we agree that each candidate would have a, um, you know, wouldn't hear the other candidates' responses. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Okay. I'll give her a second. Looks like she's working on that. There's no way really to tell her she does or doesn't. Yeah, we have to trust her. Um, oh, she dropped off. Okay, all right. Um, so the reason I asked the question is because, you know, having been here for a short time, um, I have had the opportunity to talk to some of the employees and um, there, there were some people that were not happy with the last administration, so that's why I asked, what could, what could you do differently this time? But the administration is it's a team of three, right? Correct. So whether or not it was yeah. me or Paul right. or Miles, Agreed. I don't know if you know which one it was. No. So it's hard to decide what right. to answer a question that way if you don't know who or what the situation was. I certainly believe that I was honest and respectful to all employees in our town. And um, and if it became if it wasn't received that way, I didn't know it, so I can't change something I don't know. So maybe just communication. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But if you don't know that it's not if it's a problem, then it's hard to solve right. something that you don't know. Right. And our employees need to be more vocal about their issues. Agreed. You know, and, and I certainly yeah. haven't got a problem saying that. Right. You know, if you have a problem with us, you need to tell us. You yeah. know, but sometimes employees don't like to hear the word no. And so that just gets them upset with you anyway, whoever they said it, whoever said no, you know. Agreed. Um, so it's hard to fix something you're not aware of. Right. Oh, I agree. Okay. Um, I, I guess the, the answer is communication, but it has to be from both ends. Yes. Yeah. Right. I agree. I think he went outside though. Um, I'll find I thought he, he might have gone that way. I don't know. So you won't be see, seeing any of the rest of us again, right? So I can go, or do you want me to stay? Well, were you going to try to make a decision tonight? I think or the goal was to do that. So you might have like, wait and see if there's a decision. Okay, all right, we'll do it. I'm going to think the decision's not going to make it one day. Because I got the digesting answer. Okay, yeah, well, that's fine. Do you want, um, does somebody want that? Oh, yeah, so, so, I mean, that's fine. I mean, we can talk in public. Because we really we have to talk in public. 
We do have appointments um, for planning board concern as well, so maybe we'll find a slot. Okay. Great. Okay. All right. So we'll, I guess we'll have Jack here, and then. Okay. I think I think, I think John went John out to, find, to him. find him. I think they checked this way, and it's not. So no decision tonight. No. Or we can leave. Monday. Okay. Thank All right. You. All right. Thank you. I see ya. Anybody has Jody's um, are you guys? No, I think they would. Uh, so, yeah. Um, okay. if, if it has to be 6'10, it'll be 6'10. Yeah. Um, we'll make them stand in the hall. I, I don't have um, Jody's number, so I don't know if somebody else does that can um, text her in a few minutes. I do. I do. Okay, let's, let's, okay. Let's Hi, Jack. Come on. Hey, guys. Hi, Jack. Hello. Hello. Uh, we met? No, nice to meet Jack you. Nice Thank you. Nice to meet you. Hi, Jack Boyle. That's selling her. Um, so you want to ask I'll start for us, yeah. I'll start the same question. So, Jack, if you if you're not the chosen candidate tonight, would you still consider me running for the select board when it comes up for election? I'm not sure. Okay. To be honest. That, that's a big question. I mean, part of the reason I want to do it is to feel it out. Okay. Make sure I'm a good fit to you, and you're a good fit to me. Okay. And, uh, oh, I won't answer. So, so, so the last candidate I did work with, so I know her background a little bit, I'm just going to ask a little bit about your knowledge of finances and how budget and work for you and basically your general knowledge of that. Okay. Well, I've done budgets for 30 years. Okay. I've run small companies. Uh, started out with 12 people, growing them to 600 people. Next company I had, I had 135 people. Growing to 2,000 people. And I've done budgets my whole life. Small ones, large ones, prioritizing them, making them work. All right. So something like the town budget is not going to have them one. Okay. And yeah, that's the question I really have. We have, so we have a budget of um, about $2.5 million. I've done them from. Uh, Two hundred to a billion and a half. Okay. A little bit bigger than what we have, but that's awesome. Um, so my question was, um, um, if you were selected, what will you bring to the table for the town, the employees, and the select board? Um, if you've already run on the, this committee, what are you going to do differently? Would you have obviously run on the committee? So, um, so really, what is it you can bring? to those things? Well, let me start off by saying uh, I bring general management skills, I manage companies, I manage organizations, and that includes hiring people. I literally have hired hundreds of people. Um, so I have that capacity, as well as managing the business. I'm good from a strategy point of view, and then I bought companies and put them together, and had it reorganize things, outsource things, move things around, and set priorities. And on the financial acronym, I think it brings to the table. On the people perspective, I think I'm very objective. I'm not one-sided in my thinking, not biased. And I try and come up with the best solutions. Uh, I'm focused on the seniors of the town, but I'm also focused on the young people. At Northeastern University, I was uh, on the board of one of their colleges, and I spent my whole time mentoring kids in the inner city. So I've done done all of that. Okay. So that's what I think I bring. Now, I, what I don't bring is the process that's being done in the town. That's going to take me a little bit of time to get up to speed on. You know, that that's my downside. Um. Are, do you feel that you're a quick study? Yes. Because we're, well, we're learning as well, so Paul and I are also You're always learning. You're always kind of learning. Right. Well, um, there's a lot of notes from government. Um, well, that's what I'm saying. Is I don't know that aspect of it, and that's, that's something i got to learn. Yep, uh, well, I was on the budget committee for five years, and um, I still am learning about the budget process and, um, you know, some of the things that Caroline knows we certainly don't know. Um, you know, management, revenue, that's all, um, you know, things that we're going to have to learn together. Right. 
I do have one request, though, that if I do get this position, that I can maybe get a couple hours with you. Over this. Yeah, I don't need okay, so Absolutely. Just kind of do a download on my own. <laughs> I would hope so. All right. Um, well, she's done on Friday. I'm done on Friday, but, but it is really important. I, I really appreciate that intention because um, there are some things about roles and responsibilities of board members that are important to know. Um, so, absolutely. We make time. And talking about boards and select boards, uh, I've been on public company boards, private company boards, charitable boards. I've had my own charity. I've done all of those. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Enjoy. Have a good night. Thank you, too. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you all. Bye. Take care. Thank you, buddy. All right, so we can maybe Jody back. Okay. Carrie, did you say that you were able to text Jody? Um, I think Nancy's, Nancy's going to grab it. Okay. I'll be right back. Thank you. 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 Thank Since I had, I have worked with the Newsom Select Board, but I really haven't worked with you. But I know you've had experience on the Select Board. Just give me a quick rundown of that, please. Yeah, we were more hands on then. Um, I took over for Ed Jansen, and that was transitioning to give more of the um, day to day stuff and authority to Caroline. Um, I was a little leery of that then just because of what's happening now when we were on ed jansen had even said you're going to need a town administrator or a town manager or something um when he's gone because you need you need to be there and so we had our division of labor and um everybody had a piece so we all did something i was putting in probably two and a half days a week um some 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 weeks not and some weeks i've had nine o'clock meetings at Lake river um uh joy boss um i was also um we expanded our hiring department um, that's when we hired george um and a few months later ed um we collaboratively put the budget together um at the time, Suzanne took the lead on that. We did the budget workshops. Um, at the time, I was on CIP, REC, and Joint Loss, and Lamprey River. Um, before that, I was on the budget committee for many years, um, a couple of years after I moved into town. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I've got my question to answer. Okay. Um, so Jody, uh, my question is, um, if you were selected, um, what do you feel you can bring to the table uh, for the town, the board, and the employees? And if um, you have already been on this committee, what would you do differently? Um, I would still represent the people. Um, some of the things that we did, we managed by emergency. Um, Three days after I got elected, I got a call from Chief Ushar that the high school was on fire. 
What do you do with that? So um, I was also oh that was I was also part of emergency management with um, fire with fire and police too. And black board has this black role in that. Um, voting for the people. It wasn't an agenda. It was if they came to the meeting and they voiced their opinion, I listened to them because I'm representing them. You're representing not. So it's it wasn't my agenda. My agenda. I never went in with this is what I want to do. This is what I want to help manage. Once the budget, I felt like once the budget was set, you're really just um, doing day to day operations and trying to find cost savings. Um, so, given a different administration, the transfer station. Oh, I'm sorry. We heard the transfer station, and then you cut out. Oh, sorry. At the time, the transfer station was being revamped. Um, that's when we put in the second compactor um, to save calling fees and. I know that structure has changed since then, but I bring the experience of having to do some of the day-to-day -day operations more so than the previous administration because after I had left, it was pushed more and more to employees. And in a circumstance, as now we're going to be into that same emergency management style for a couple of weeks, at least, a, well, hopefully a week, a couple of weeks, that we can find somebody um, to help fill that role and to what role that capacity is, um, I'm not sure where that'll, the board will decide on that. So, um, do, what do you think um, that you could do to improve um, employee relations? Any thoughts about that? And how do you feel relations were when you were on the board? Between employee and employee or employee and selected? Um, or employee in town. Everybody, employee, you know, employees um, within the town. So between um, employees to employees and employees that select board, what was your what was your feel about um, their satisfaction here? Um, I felt we needed to do more retention. Um, I wanted to um, give dental benefits, which is about four thousand dollars. In three years' time, you couldn't come up with four thousand dollars for them to have dental. Every other town, every other city and town offers dental. Um, it was quite embarrassing for me to not have my employees have dental. And when I was a selectman, I felt that they were my employees. Those were those were the people that I was supposed to be taking care of as much as they're taking care of us. Um, and that meant a lot. Um, we had to change our insurance at the time. They were having $5 co-pays, and those weren't options anymore. So it went up to 10 things up to 20 now. Um, so that changed, too. So that kind of um, cost wage adjustments. Um, and then um, interdepartmentally, um, it got better. Things got better, I think, um, from my end. Um, I said that when I first got elected, I sat down with the fire, I sat down with, I looked at, and I sat down with police, um, Kate and Andrea and Carolina at the time, um, just to see day-to-day -day operations. Kind of cut out there a little bit in that last sentence, but I get the I get the gist of it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. No. Um. Okay. All right. Uh, um. I don't have any. No, I don't either. Um, Hope you feel better though. Right. Okay. Thanks, Jody. Thank, Thank you, Jody. So much, Jill. Um, so Once again, I appreciate all you guys are doing right now. You're in a tough spot. Okay. So we um, are not going to um, um, decide on the candidate until Monday's meeting. Okay. Okay. Well, that was good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a great night, everybody. You too. Bye. Bye. And I'll be the first person to say, as I have to now sit and digest all the people and my notes and everything. Yeah. And then we will talk in public about what we think before we make the decision. Sure. That, that's something. That, that's what they said we have to do. So.
Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's and right. I did um, reread the email and look at that case law that um, that Attorney Buckley stated, and uh, yeah, it makes sense. So I did not reach out to the Minnesota Association. Okay. So this gentleman, I mean, we're taking community input, but this gentleman had his hand up earlier. Should we ask him? Um, do we want to? Um, well, do we? Before we close up this lecture, yeah, we'll sure. close up. Yeah. no, it's not about this particular part. Okay, okay, okay. so thank you. I'm gonna make the motion, unless there's any other business to come before us to close our meeting. So, so mm -hmm. we can start at six. Okay, sure. So, sure. I'll make